Well, hey, fish heads. I always want to say good morning because I usually shoot these things in the morning, but I don't know when you guys watch these things, so it could be the middle of the night. So, howdy do, fish heads. It's time. It's time. Long overdue. We're going to do a spray session today. Pick up a couple of these. Oh, yeah, and this is going to be the first spray session. I'm not using this tabletop. We're using the California Air Tools compressor. So we are going to do a uh, continuing series that, that I think is important this year or any any time, uh, which is the Match the Hatch series. And I'm going to try and kind of bring in as many as I can throughout this year while I'm doing spray sessions. And this is certainly one of them. We're going to be working smelts today. Smelt is a very basic pattern, but I'm going to try and knock out two birds with one stone. The first thing that we're going to do, obviously, is a smelt pattern. We're going to be doing that on a uh, dinger wart, and then we're also going to be doing it on a 2.5. Um, we're going to be using just a regular standard pressing. And I'm also going to show you guys, because I got a question over the last couple of weeks on how do we put eyes on baits that don't have the 3D. So this is a per perfect example of how to do that. So we're going to go through, show you the smelt pattern. The smelt uh, pattern itself is a very easy pattern to do on a scale of 1 to 10. Difficulty 10 being the worst and difficulty 1 being pretty easy. I'm going to rate this a 2 or 3. There's a couple little color shifts on it. Smelt are pretty much a silvery fish. Um, there's a couple variations that you find. The northeastern smelts, like the bay smelts up in Massachusetts and Maine, um, have a little bit of black fleck, so we are going to use that today. But if you look at illustrated versions, you're going to see that now, versus the actual version of the photograph. We're going to shoot that now. Um, there's a couple little variations. So we're going we're gonna to include some silver, some pearlized silver in this, just a little bit of gray around the eyes, black opaque to do the splatter on this, some pearlized, because we want to try and keep this as transparent as possible. I'm also going to do just a little bit of gold, and I think I should have it somewhere in here. I just know it is. Lime green. Just a hint of that on the back of it. And that's our basic pattern this, this morning. Well, morning for me. I don't know. Again, uh, you could be good day. How's that? So we're going to do on two warts and one 2.5 rattling. And let's get started. You know, there's a running debate on to paint the bills or not to paint the bills. That is the question. Um, the wiggle warts, we're going to paint the bills. Normally, I really paint wiggle wart bills. Um, aside from the fact that I live near the Ozarks, very close, like I pretty much live at the gateway to the Ozarks. Um, wiggle warts are a delicacy. It's like caviar to the fishing community around here. Um, we're going to leave it somewhat translucent on the end of it because the smelt is a very natural looking fish and it's a very plain looking fish. Um, so with these, we're just going to do a real transparent, maybe a little bit of speckling on the bill and some pearlized white. Um, on this, we're taping the bill off completely. And you notice I always tape, like I don't just do one piece of tape straight across. I, I do the corners as well because I want that bill to look as crisp as possible when we're doing this kind of stuff. Not everything has to be complicated, and this pattern certainly is not that. However, it is a cool pattern, and it's a big fish catcher, especially in the, in the northeast areas where you have a little bit of a mixture. You've got the Great Lakes going on up there. You've got uh, everything from bay to ocean. to So this is a very multi-species um, target lure. Uh, big favorite of stripers. Uh, I don't know if that's what, this is a customer paint job, so I don't know if that's what my, my customer is targeting, but I would imagine that uh, 
these little guys are going to get eaten with stripers uh, when they come in, especially in the spring, to do what they do. Usually they come into fresh water, complete fresh water instead of brackish. They make that long journey in to breed. So this would be one of my go-tos for striper fishing, for big bass, for just about anything that's an inshore target species. And, and it's not just limited to the Northeast. I would, I would use this and I probably will make a couple for myself um, all over the United States. And I'm certain that the uh, smallmouth and the largemouth and the mean old spotted bass will eat it up here in the Ozarks as well. So to start out today, I've already got the airbrush cranked up. We're gonna run this um, pretty quick. I'm just doing a run of three. We're going to get these out of the way, but I always like to leave these out so that you guys can see what I'm using. I usually shoot a picture at the end of the video to let you guys know um, just the color numbers. And each, each color you can order by this number right here. So Pearl White's 5310. And that's true of Createx. I think it's probably true of just about anything that's out there. Also, I am a big advocate of pearlized colors, period. And yes, um, these PH Martins, they shoot a little bit thicker, but they're really good colors. And most of the PHs are now on sale and clearanced in the iridescence for about $2.24, which is a 75% reduction. Um, not sponsored by any of these inks, but I always like to, if I can show you guys a really good deal, um, and you're in the States, I don't know if this is going to be applicable for other places, but for Hobby Lobby here in the States, 75% off, it's a $9 ink, and you can't find it anywhere that inexpensively except for right here at Hobby Lobby. So go check them out and get yourself some deals. So I've got this loaded up a little bit, and I'm just, I'm really, a lot of this, again, is trigger control, and we don't need to, to just blast the paint onto this. We just want a real light coating. Again, this is not going to be a difficult pattern at all. Um, it's actually a very cool pattern to paint. And we'll just kind of let that get all groovy. I am going to do the pearlized white all over this bill. And I'm shooting at about 40 PSI right now just to get these base layers on. And then we're going to do a little bit less with the blending. But uh, how nice is it not to hear this um, compressor kick in every five seconds? Now I am going to have to go back and um, need to get a new regulator because I do have a couple of issues that I've discovered with that. So I've got a new regulator on the way, which also serves as a moisture trap. Another one of you guys was asking, speaking of the moisture traps, what's the deal with it? Well, basically, moisture traps, not only do they have a, an independent regulator on most of them, but they clean up any of the, like if you get water through your line, it's going to change the the paint signature in here. So it's going to really thin it out. And it usually doesn't mix with paint very well. It usually comes out just like clear water. Um, and it'll make a mess all over your lure. So you want to try and pull the moisture out of the hoses and the lines as best you can. See, we have that real translucent coloring on there now. Beautiful. Um, and then on the top half of this, you want to, I'm sorry, let me, let me finish one thought at a time. I have had lots of coffee this morning. Um, it'll pull the moisture out of the line. You won't get that real clear blah, splatter on top of your lure when it comes out. Now this silver is a little bit thicker and less translucent than the pearl white is. And it's just kind of tense. We're just going to do the top half of that down to the side. And now you can start to see that defined line here where the belly of this we're going to keep super transparent. And we're going to add just a little bit of layering to the top. And that's really what you want to see because a lot of the times when you see a fish in the water, especially the forage species that the big game fish are going after. They have that transparent appearance to them on their bellies. And we'll go ahead and do this with the square bill as well. Just run it right down to that median line. 
Make sure the face is done. And there we go. Just run that paint out. We're going to accent this just slightly with gold, not a whole lot. I'm going to do a little bit around the eyes. And for that, I'm going to use gold and I'm going to turn my pressure down from right around 40 to about 10. And that's going to be a huge difference in pressure change. But we're just doing an accent. So I'm going to shoot just the edge of this bill here. Come around and do the tail. Just the edge of the bill. Come around and do the tail. And then on this, since we don't have a bill that we're going to paint, we're just going to do the nose and the tail. And there we go. Just a little bit. Blow the rest of that off. Really don't need a whole lot. Now we're going to do a little bit of accenting with the same PSI, right around 10, with some gray. This is a medium gray. They do make gray in a couple of different shades. I like the middle of the road for this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to come around the eyes and just accent that. And you see just a little bit of leftover gold, but that's okay. That's not going to hurt a thing. That's going to get eventually covered. Kind of adds a neat accent, if you ask me. And the same thing right there and right there. Now on this I might just do a little bit of the top. Since I have a little bit left in the chamber, just a little bit. We're going to kind of fade it to the front here. Now that's the first time that's run. I've had this on for about 30 minutes. I've done some other stuff before I got you guys on the spray session here. You can see that I'm not having to shout. I'm not in a voice that's unnatural to me. I'm just talking. Um, my camera is right about at chest level. Let's go ahead and just edge this slightly, a little bit darker. Do the same thing here. Now, it's not whisper quiet, this compressor, but it is, it's called ultra quiet. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. It's really good. And the one difference, now I, I still am an advocate. I'm not an advocate of master airbrushes, although if you learn on it and, and it's affordability for you guys, master will get you through some hard times. They're a bit, they're a bit hard to clean. Um, but as far as their air compressors, I used that, that little tabletop for three years with no issues. Um, so I really have nothing to complain on it about. I am going to clean the chamber here because I do have a little bit of residual in here. So really, if you guys have stuff that you want me to spray and it's not one of my, like, Colonel Sanders secret recipes, <laughs> I'm going to be happy to say, and I'll tell you straight up whether or not I'm going to show you the pattern or not. There's very few things that I won't show you guys how to do. Um, I, I really enjoy teaching. Now, there are just a couple that I probably don't want to give up the ghost on. I'm going to put in a little bit of lime green here. But yeah, please, by all means, leave your comments and questions in that section below. Well, that's just a, just a hint of green on top. You really don't need much. When you're working against a silver um, backdrop and a, a pearl white, it's really not that that much you need to do, and you'll get that that definition. You can really see it pop on that little wiggle wart that's sitting there. It's just a little bit we want to throw around the eyes here. And again, we're just accenting. We're just adding on to what we already have. And you know me, I like to paint wet on wet. Um, I have a a predisposition that and, and, and pre-qualification that these things blend better that my paint colors will blend better put just a little bit on the underside of that bill there there we go and that's pretty much we've done the silver we've done the gray we've done the gold we've done the pearl lime 
and we've done the pearlized white. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to finish these eyes up. Now, on the um, on these eyes, on the wiggle warts, you guys are asking how to put those on. I'm going to use a Q-tip. I usually do, um, especially since I'm, I'm going to heat set all of this first. I could do it either way. I could do it like I'm doing here. But if you go back and look at those pictures, the eyes are pretty much white. I'm going to put just a little bit of dark accents here and at the underside of the tail. So we've got gold up top. And usually when I, when I put a dark color on the bottom of the tail, I like to call that a target. Uh, just kind of indicates where the tail of the fish is, or the tail would be. And it gives that, gives that uh, target fish something to go after. So there we have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat set this. I'm going to do that off camera. And I'm going to come back. Um, we're going to add white to this. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and darken that just a little bit. Really don't need much with this. And the only other black we're going to use is going to be for splattering. And that's the basic pattern, you guys. Just a little hint of green on top. We're using that pearlized lime green. Silver and pearl white. Just a little splash of gray, a little bit of gold. And we'll come right back. We are at the splatter part of this shoot try and cover the area that I'm going to be flicking at and I'm just knocking the excess off here because we don't want to over splatter this either since I only have one that I'm working with I can go ahead and pull that extra helping hands down and then just come through get all of this stuff and I always like to try and make sure that I've got my uh, my other lures out of the way because flicking while I love how random I can get with it it has a tendency to over splatter sometimes and you don't want to get it on stuff that you don't want it on let's go ahead and finish this one up here I'm gonna leave that belly the way it is not do a whole bunch of splatter on that just on the sides and the top because that's pretty much the way the smelt is set this off to the side and we've got these two sides we're going to come back and do the cool thing about these helping hands is that you can really move these around to get the angle that you want with very little effort light on the head and I am going to go ahead and do the bill on this just to kind of continue the pattern don't need to do anything crazy like we would on a craw pattern a lot of times I'll do some pretty cool stuff on the craws just to make it look a little fancier and you know with the match the hatch series it's, it's kind of the the old adage that uh, a lot of lures are designed and made to catch the anglers and not the fish Reaction bites, you're pretty much going to catch the fish regardless. If the fish are in the mood to eat, they're going to eat. Um, and I do like, especially when it's a high-pressured situation, I, I like to show the fish stuff that they haven't seen before. So I stand by all the different patterns. But when you really want to get low-key and match the hatch, then there's just, you don't need to do a whole lot to, to dress it up. You want it to look as natural as possible. You want patterns that are going to be consistent. You want them that are going to work. Um, and there we have it. That is 
pretty much. Now we're going to do a couple of things with the eyes here once this is dry. So we're going to come back and show you that here in just a second. So we've heat set this and uh, it might still be a little tacky in a couple of places but that's okay. Um, we're going to use obviously for something that we can set eyes into. This is such a plain bait that we're going to use these, you can see that little bit of holographic flash just to make this bait pop a little bit more while still, still keeping it natural. You saw in the pictures, and I can go ahead and flash those again, that these, uh, these little smelt guys do have silver eyes. So we're going to add just a little bit of super glue down on that, that eye socket right there. Don't need much. And then we'll set this off to the side. Let that get all happy and do its thing and dry. Kind of have these looking downward. There we go. Do this other side. Have these looking downward. Just lay those in real careful. Just set that off to the side there while we're working on these. Now with these, obviously, we cannot put on a three-dimensional eye, but we can get it to look pretty cool. So one of the things that we can do, there's a couple of ways we can approach this. If you have a very steady hand, take this opportunity while that's recharging itself. paints out of that. One of the things that we can do is we can come back and actually I would put a little bit of a heavier go ahead and shoot this. Now this is this doing this into the eye socket's a little bit more difficult than using a q-tip. We're still going to use that q-tip but we're going to shoot uh, we're going to shoot the silver part. Make sure that that's spraying and it is right on top of this. So basically what you're doing is you're lining this up. I'm going to hold that as steady as possible. There we go. I knew I could do it. Make sure there's no splatter. And gently pull your trigger back. Just kind of move it around in a tiny little circle. And you can see there's your your silver base. And we still you can still see a little bit of that accent from the dark that we overshot the eye on. And that's exactly what you want. And this, this part does take just a little bit of practice. But you can definitely master it in a relatively short period of time. But again, as long as you have a, a steady hand. And the cool thing is, if you mess up, you can always primer the bait again and start all over. No harm, no foul. You don't want to just come back and squeeze the trigger back real heavy. But now we have the silver that's going to be underneath the black pupil. We're going to use this little bit of black that's left on a Q-tip to put that pupil on. Now we are going to go ahead and heat set this. I'm going to set this off to the side. Clean that out here in a bit. And uh, because this shoots thicker, this makes a little bit better of a choice if you're doing pupil linings on eyes like that. So just try and now you could have also used a Q-tip for this and just push down until you get that, that widening because a Q-tip will kind of smash out a little bit. You can bring this up like that. Bring this up like this. Move that up just a little bit. Maybe put just a wee bit more black in here. There it is. Grab a Q-tip. These are just generic Q-tips. They're not the Q-tip Q-tip brand. I think these are Walmart. But you want to you want to look. If you're going to use Q-tips for stuff, you want to make sure that the the cotton is is wove tightly onto the plastic. And then I just kind of roll this. And 
actually, you know what, let's go ahead and heat set that real quick so we don't get a whole lot of mush. That'll take all of about 30 seconds to do both of them. Were you guys timing me? I don't know if that was exactly 30 seconds, but... Now, this is probably soaked in a little bit more than we want, so let's go ahead and re-roll that. Ooh, it is windy outside. Guys, we've had like four straight days of rain, seven inches of rain on the ground. My front yard, you pretty much can't even see the backyard is a mosh pit. I use my finger just to set it on the edge. And I found that it's a little bit easier. There you go. Right in the center. It's exactly what you want. And if you use your fingertip to steady it and line that up and don't over, don't blob it on there, you get a pretty cool looking eye. And if you just let that air dry and don't mash it with air when you're heat setting, a lot of the times that'll even give it more of a 3D look because that black will dry standing up. You guys see that? Just a little bit. Pupils are not 100% round. Remember that too. So... There it is. Actually, I'm going to put just a little bit more on this side. Cool. And then I have a tendency to tilt these back. Gravity will take hold just a little bit. So if you tilt this back just like that, it, it dries pretty well. Hopefully I've answered the question on how to do a 3D eye on a bait that doesn't take 3D eyes like those wiggle warts. And there's a few others out there. Like some of the bombers and the Normans and the bandits have two-dimensional eyes. Um, your Smithwick Rogue has a unique eye socket that if you take it out, um, if, if you lose that eye, it's very difficult to get a replacement that's going to fit exactly. Same with the duos. If you don't have the duo eyes because they, they look funky, they're more of a triangular shape. Um, you can be hard pressed, but you can always get the job done just by being a little creative with paint. This is a Uniball Vision Elite, and I guarantee there's going to be somebody that asked the question in this video. Watch till the end, folks. Um, Uniball Vision Elite, this is a fine point, and the easiest way to do it is don't hit it straight on because you're just going to dig into the paint job. Angle it about 45 degrees when you're signing your bait, and you'll get a nice even coat of ink. And there you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a smelt pattern, a hatch match series from Jekyll Bates. As always, thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. It's always good company. Spend some time here on the channel. Um, I'll teach you what I know. I certainly don't know it all, but I am happy to share what I do. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks, spring. It'll be here before we know it. Texas and Florida, whoo! Now would be the time to be there, huh? Hey, if you're on the ice, be sure it's four or thicker. Four inches is usually the safe bet. Um, if you're not on the ice, then just think spring, folks. It'll be here soon. Happy casting, guys. See ya.